Okay. Hi, my name is Carrie Kai. Uh, I am a research scientist at Google Brain. And uh, today I'll be presenting our work on example-based AI explanations. This was joint work between Google's Creative Lab and Google's People Plus AI Research Initiative. The motivation behind this work is that machine learning predictions can be difficult for end users to understand. For instance, given just this humorous example, you could imagine that an end user might want, to, might want to know why the strawberry was predicted to be an apple. And with the increasing complexity of algorithms, such as deep neural nets, uh, their reasoning can be quite opaque, even to the developers of those algorithms. As a result, there's been a wide range of explainability methods trying to increase the transparency of such algorithms. These range from feature attribution methods, which, for instance, point out which part of an image um, was most influential to the prediction, to higher level concept attribution methods, uh, which, for instance, might explicitly say that it was the shape of the strawberry that made it look like an apple. In more recent work, there's been a growing amount of focus on examples as a potentially effective way to uh, enable AI explanations. And this is partly motivated by um, a lot of foundational work in educational psychology and cognitive science, which tells us that examples can be quite an intuitive way to explain concepts to, say, children. Uh, for instance, rather than explaining to a child what the definition of a strawberry is, we could instead give a child many examples of strawberries and non-strawberries, and through that, implicitly explain what the essence of a strawberry is. So inspired by this work on, explanation, uh, on examples, um, this research explores two kinds of example-based explanations. Uh, and we evaluate those example-based explanations in, the, in an in-the-wild study to look at how they affect end-user experience. We focus this work on, uh, so first I'm going to tell you about the two kinds of example-based explanations. And, and these explanations we focused within the sketch recognition domain. As some of you know, QuickDraw is a widely used and popular platform, similar to Pictionary, where users are challenged to draw common household objects. And they're given, say, 20 seconds to do so, um, at which point they're told whether an AI has recognized their object or not. So for example, you might, draw, you might be asked to draw an avocado, and then you're told after 20 seconds whether an AI has recognized it as, in fact, an avocado. So let's suppose that you drew this avocado, and the AI says that, no, I did not recognize it. Well, how can we use examples to explain why? You can imagine that one way to do so might be to show you um, how your avocado looks like other objects that aren't avocados. So that's precisely what we did. So comparative explanations aim to compare your drawing to other uh, objects that are not in your, in your object class. So here, for instance, your avocado might look like a pear, an onion, or a potato. And so what we did was we uh, computed the embedding of the user's drawing, and then we found the nearest neighbor drawing from alternative classes. Um, so, for example, the pair, as you can see, is sort of overlaid on top of the user's drawing of an avocado so that they can kind of see for themselves how similar their avocado might look to a pair. But even with this comparative explanation, you, you might imagine that, well, maybe the user really does still think that their avocado <coughs> looks more like an avocado than a pear, an onion, or a potato. So for that reason, we also created a second type of explanation, these are called normative explanations. So normative explanations, rather than comparing anything, um, instead, they uh, draw a random subset of avocados from the training set. So uh, for instance, given this set of avocados from the training set, a user might then realize, oh, maybe my avocado is missing a pit. So given those two kinds of example-based explanations, we then conducted and in the wild evaluation. And specifically, we were curious whether, first of all, do these example-based explanations have any effect on end user experience? And secondly, are there any differences between uh, the, the effects of those two kinds? 
To do so, we deployed these explanations to about 1,000 users on QuickDraw, and we used a two by two between subject study design. Two by two meaning that the comparative explanations were either on or off, and the normative explanations were also either on or off. So uh, let's say you're one of the people in the study, you drew an avocado, you see um, what the result was, and then you're given, you're randomly assigned to one of these four conditions. So you either see no explanation, a comparative explanation, a normative explanation, or both explanations combined. And then to measure the effect on uh, end user experience, we asked four survey questions. So the first question addressed the extent to which users felt they understood the system. The second two questions got at uh, user trust. So two key dimensions of trust are capability and benevolence. So we asked a question about the extent to which people felt the system was capable and the extent to which people felt the system was benevolent. And then finally, we asked the question regarding attribution of credit and blame. So we asked people, you know, given the decision that you just saw, um, would you attribute the decision more to your own drawing capabilities or more to the system's capabilities? And of course, because for each user, their drawing was either recognized or not, um, we also analyzed whether the, that fact, whether their drawing was recognized or not, whether that had any effect on end user experience as well. So first, looking at the results on uh, capability, we found that there was an interaction effect between normative explanations and whether or not the, dr the drawing was recognized. So if a user's drawing was recognized, we saw no significant difference between any of the explanations. <laughs> However, when the drawings were not recognized, uh, those who had seen normative explanations felt that the system had higher capability than those who had not seen a normative explanation. And we also saw a similar trend uh, on the question regarding system understanding. So um, when drawings were not recognized, those who had seen normative explanations rated the system as having, uh, rated themselves as, as understanding the system better compared to those who had not seen any normative explanations. So at this point, you might be wondering why normative explanations might have had an effect, whereas comparative explanations, we did not uh, see a significant effect. And when we looked at the data, we found that Comparative explanations were sometimes quite surprising. So let's say this, you know, a user drew this toe, um, and, and the top three predi predictions were a hula hoop, donut, and bracelet. And sure, it's true that the drawings are quite similar to the toe that I drew, um, but they're quite semantically unrelated to this concept of toe or any sort of human anatomy. And so for that reason, it could have led to surprise, and it could have also exposed some of the algorithm's limitations. In fact, we found that users tended to spend a little longer viewing comparative explanations compared to normative explanations. And this could have been partly because of that element of surprise. Um, it could have also been because perhaps there was some notion of cognitive load um, differences where with normative explanations, notice that all the pictures were from the same category. You just look at a bunch of toe pictures. Um, whereas in the comparative explanations, the user would have to compare across multiple categories. And that could have potentially contributed to this longer duration of time they spent looking at the explanation. So to summarize the research contributions, uh, we explored two kinds of example-based explanations. And we also conducted an in-the-wild evaluation where we found that these example-based explanations do have some effect on end-user experience, but that these effects differ depending on the type of explanation. So comparative explanations, on the one hand, uh, sometimes led to surprise and may have exposed some of the algorithm li algorithm's limitations, whereas normative explanations tended to improve user perceptions during system errors. So depending on your goal, um, you may want to consider these different kinds of explanations differently. This work also points to a future where leveraging human intelligence 
could play a key role in improving explainability. So whereas in the past, we often lean heavily on machines to kind of do the heavy duty lifting of providing an explanation and humans being somewhat passive, ex passive recipients of those explanations. But with this work and with I think some of the other work we've seen in this session, we envision a future where this is much more of um, a kind of a collaborative work between the human and the machine where the human also brings something to the table. They bring their own intelligence, their own past experiences to interpret the examples that they're given. And so in that sense, perhaps in the future, machines would only need to be able to present just enough information for humans to understand. Um, and with that, thanks for your attention. Here's my contact information. And uh, I hope you'll go check out the paper. Thank you. Yeah, uh, one thing is, I'm not sure how users actually understand the task. So they might understand the task in a comparative way or a normative way. So if you say to somebody, draw an avocado, okay, how, what they probably hear, what they mean is, draw a representation of an avocado that's good enough for a human to recognize in a scene. So if I told you, like, draw an avocado uh, so I can, you can include it in a salad bowl then maybe the only oval thing you would see in a salad bowl would be in a, an avocado, so that would be, maybe that the, the avocado is good enough. So it depends, you know, whereas the normative one, you know, obviously anything that looks more like an avocado would have a better chance of being recognized. So it's always good advice to say, make it a better drawing, you know. But whether the drawing is actually good enough for the purpose, that's something that's up for grabs. And if people are thinking it's good enough for the purpose of a human, and then you know, your algorithm comes along, and, it's, and you know, they might feel a little tricked, because you didn't tell me that you were supposed to, that I was supposed to draw an avocado that was good enough for the algorithm. Yes, so uh, one bit of context around this was that, I think that's a really good point. I think the context of the, of the task really matters. In this case, the context was that they were told up front that they're playing a game and that they're going to draw drawings, and then they're going to see results on whether an AI has recognized the drawing. So that was the context around the task. And I, I do think that the, um, the context around the task really matters. So in the future, it might be interesting to see in which situations do different kinds of explanations have more impact. You know, game-based setting might be different from um, like a critical high-stakes setting as well. <coughs> Thank you. Um. Hi. Just one last question. Yeah. Um, I was just curious if you found any differences between uh, cultures when you compared the normative versus comparative explanations. So were there any differences between uh, people of one culture feeling that the normative explanations were better as compared to the other ones? So did you find any impact of culture in how people perceived uh, these explanations? So we did not see any, we, we did not analyze the differences because we, for privacy reasons, we didn't collect location information. Um, however, if you go on the Quick Draw site, there's actually a whole slew of research that people around the world have been doing on the Quick Draw data. And some of that work does look at some of the cultural uh, similarities and differences, which have been really interesting. Thank you. Okay, I guess it's time to thank right. the 